I'm Mire Jacobson, and I'm delighted to be here to discuss my NBR working paper, Financial Incentives, and Other Nudges Do Not Increase COVID-19 Vaccinations Amongst the Vaccine Hesitant. Uh, this is joint work with Tom Chang, who, like myself, is at USC, Manisha Shah at UCLA, and Drs. Rajiv Pramanik and Samir B. Shah at Contra Costa Health Services. Before I begin, I do just want to acknowledge the generous funding we received uh, for this work from JPAL North America State and Local Innovation Initiative and the NBR's NIA-funded Wurgel Center. Um, this work really wouldn't have been possible without this support. Um, of course, the usual disclaimers apply that the funders are not responsible for the work and our findings and conclusions do not necessarily represent their views. Um, so in this work, we wanted to understand whether we could increase COVID-19 vaccination rates amongst the vaccine hesitant. Um, and by that, we mean people who after kind of months of eligibility and despite ample supply of vaccine uh, had not yet been vaccinated. Um, there's been actually a lot of work trying to understand this group, um, but almost all of it has been focused on vaccination intentions, meaning people's stated likelihood of vaccination. And um, we were already partnering with an integrated health system in Northern California to test ways to increase COVID-19 testing. Um, and we're able to pivot to try to understand whether financial incentives um, and other behavioral nudges could increase uh, vaccinations. Um, our implementing partner in this work is Contra Costa Health Services, which is essentially the Department of Health in Contra Costa County, California. Um, you can see here on the map, Contra Costa is this area in green. Um, and it is um, to the east of San Francisco um, and north of Berkeley and Oakland. And just in terms of population, it's a little bigger than the state of Rhode Island. Um, Contra Costa Health Services is uh, responsible for public health testing and vaccinations, and importantly also runs the Medicaid Managed Care Plan in the county, um, where Medicaid is public health insurance for uh, people from low-income households. Um, the county actually did a really great job at getting people vaccinated. Um, and at the time of our study, about 77% of the county had been partially vaccinated. Um, rates were lower in the Medicaid plan. Uh, and there were, there were and continues to be general concern both uh, nationally and locally about reaching this kind of remaining group of quote unquote vaccine hesitant. Um, so what did we do? Uh, between May and July of this year, we invited unvaccinated adult members of the county Medicaid managed care plan who self-identified as white, black, or Latino to take part in a survey about COVID-19. Uh, within the survey, participants were randomized to different public health messages, uh, financial incentives, or a link to an easy vaccination scheduling system. And all of these treatments were crossed such that some people got a public health message, a financial incentive, and the link, while others got one or two of the treatments and some got none. Um, just to provide a bit more detail, the financial incentives were 10 or $50 gift cards. Um, they were offered if respondents uh, randomized to those treatments got one shot within two weeks of the survey. And they were told of the incentive at the end of the survey um, and reminded of it a day or two later when they received a small gift card for successfully completing um, uh, the survey. In terms of public health messaging, uh, we had three different messages uh, survey respondents could be, could be randomized to. Um, the first was one from the California Department of Public Health and was focused on getting back to normal. We think of this as kind of our treatment as usual um, message. Um, the second and third uh, messages were ones we created with physicians at our partner, uh, Contra Costa Health Services. Uh, first, we recorded messages focused on the general safety and efficacy of the vaccines. And second, we recorded messages focused on the potential negative health consequences of remaining unvaccinated. And we were interested in the impact of having a gender and or race concordant messenger. Um, so all the messages were recorded by both male and female physicians who were white, black, um, or Latino. Some respondents uh, also were provided at the end of the survey with an easy vaccine scheduling link, which I show here. Um, and the nice thing about this link uh, is that the appointment availability can be seen right away without any kind of special login or kind of click process. Um, so it really was much easier than at least the um, link available through the state of California. And this here is our main finding. Um, the solid diamonds here show our point estimates and the dashed lines, the 95% confidence intervals. 
Um, and as you can see, none of our interventions meaningfully changed our primary outcome, which was vaccination rates within 30 days of the survey. Um, not only are the point estimates close to zero, but for most of the interventions, we can rule out pretty small increases in vaccination rates. Um, so for any financial incentive, which is combining the 10 or $50 incentives, the upper 95% confidence interval rules out an increase on the order of one percentage point. We also looked at the link between stated vaccination intentions, which much of the research has looked at, um, and actual vaccinations, um, and how both of these were affected by the interventions. Um, and as I said, this is important because that's kind of where the prior work um, was mostly focused, just out of expediency. So our intention questions were asked after participants viewed the public health messages if they saw any, and before they learned about financial incentives or saw the easy scheduling link. So this is really all about the messages. Um, in blue here, you see estimated percentage point changes for vaccinations and in red uh, for intentions to get vaccinated. Um, what we found here somewhat surprising, in particular, even though the public health messages had no impact on actual vaccinations, it did change what people said they would do. Um, the provider PSAs, particularly the one focused on negative health consequences, really increased people's stated likelihood of getting vaccinated. Um, why they ultimately did not get vaccinated is, is unclear, um, but may have to do with uh, barriers between intentions and actions, um, or that the effect of messaging on intentions is just short-lived. And while we found financial incentives didn't work on the whole, for some groups, the data suggests the incentives unfortunately backfired. Um, so specifically for respondents who indicated in the survey that they supported Trump in the 2020 presidential election, um, the $50 incentive decreased their 30-day vaccination rate by nearly five percentage points. For respondents ages 40 and over, which is kind of on the older end of our sample, um, both the $10 and $50 incentive uh, reduced vaccination rates um, by about five percentage points. And again, here we can only speculate on why this happened, uh, but one guess is that the incentive was interpreted as a signal that there was something wrong with the vaccine. Finally, we did look at the impact of the public health messaging um, from a race or gender concordant messenger, and we, we were unable to detect any impact of race concordance. Uh, for gender, we found a somewhat surprising effect again. So for some messages, particularly the one focused on negative health consequences, uh, a gender discordant messenger actually reduced vaccination rates. Um, this was particularly true for uh, respondents who were, on, who were young, under age 40 in our sample, um, for men and for Latinx respondents. So just to kind of conclude, we unfortunately found that none of our interventions, small financial incentives, um, public health messages, or an easy appointment scheduling link, increased actual vaccinations. Um, and financial incentives actually seem to backfire for some groups. Um, while more work should be done in other settings, our takeaway is that small financial incentives and other nudges are unlikely to meaningfully increase vaccination rates amongst the vaccine hesitant in the US. Thank you.